Dudes to Dads, brought to you by Dad University, is a podcast to help men understand and navigate the transition of being a single dude into a family man. How do we make sense of it all? Well, we probably won't be able to, but let's go ahead and have some fun trying. And we are back. We are back. I'm Jason Kreidman. I'm Alan Bush. And this is Dudes to Dads. Again. Again. Episode 183. Mm -hmm. You know, the title of this one is very interesting. I was messing with a couple of ideas. Yeah. There was really no perfect way to say it basically these are horrible parenting styles yeah <laughs> that's the that's the best i could do. yeah yeah uh the helicopter the lawnmower the tiger and more <laughs> that's what it sounds what like martial like. arts styles that's yeah, that's true <laughs> that's true or dances <laughs> so you know we've gone over legitimate parenting styles you know when mm-hmm. we talk about you know off authoritarian and these kind of these kinds of things and, and some of them have a little bit of play in that but basically these are parenting styles which we are suggesting you don't do yeah well i'm suggesting on those other ones the real ones where there's better than other there's others there are, some are better than others and yeah. whatever but this is stuff for sure not to do mm-hmm. at least in mi opinion mm-hmm. that french <laughs> yeah, i don't know possibly <laughs> uh the first one helicopter parents yeah so this was first used in uh it says 1969 okay you can believe it back that far well it's interesting i hear that pretty frequently even to this day correct yeah. it, i think it like made a resurgence yeah i think yeah um it was in a book called parents and teenagers uh the person's name was dr heim or haim genote <laughs> You know, I don't know. One of those. <laughs> we'll put I'll, I'll, put, I'll put it in the show notes go. and you can. Uh, but basically, teens were saying that their parents hovered over them like a helicopter. Right. So that's what this came from. So basically, this is when parents are over focused on their kids. Mm-hmm. It's really over parenting is what it could be called. A lot of times they're driven by fear. The parent is driven by fear Mm -hmm. because they either think like something bad is going to happen to their kid. And so that's why they're looking over them or they might feel like, you know, something like they're going to be embarrassed by -hmm. something the kid does. Like it's in a reflection of them. You know, it's just it's not it's not a good thing to do. And I think most people understood the understand the concept of hovering over their. Sure. Yeah. You know, I didn't real what I didn't realize that it was really about teens Mm. And and such versus I always think of it as like toddler because that's where the state I was in where a helicopter parent to me was like someone who's constantly right in front of their child, like making sure that they're not getting hurt. They're like on those swings or they're climbing something or whatever. And they're just sort of all around there. And, And that is, too. But as it relates to like a teen or somebody older, what a helicopter parent would do is like, for example, making sure that they got a certain teacher at their school. Mm. So like campaigning and talking to the principal and, right, right. or, or, you know, getting over involved with their homework because they're fearful that like they're going to get a bad grade and that'll reflect bad on them. Yeah. Bad on the parent. Um, or even directing their social activity, mm-hmm. like dictating who their friends should be and setting up the, the, you know, the relationships with their other friends and yeah. stuff like that. Like, yes, that's okay when they're really little cause mm-hmm. they don't, they can't do that and you create a play date. Mm-hmm. But as they get a little bit older, they, you know, will have a tendency to choose their friends. Right. So, you know, and as you know, they get older, it just, it doesn't really work. Mm-hmm. So, you know, the problem is, is that when they are faced with challenges, um, you know, or failing, they just not, they're not building resiliency. Right. You know, yeah. um, it's just the parent is sort of doing those things for them uh, in that sense. Um, you know, and, and here's the thing. We don't like to see our kids struggle. Yeah. But you have to prepare them for the real world. For sure. You yeah. know, and so that's sort of the problem. Is Yeah. I, when you talk about toddlers, I've seen this happen where somebody was like, you know, trying to make sure that the kid didn't bump into anything or whatever. Right. I'm like, take that to an extreme. Though. Yeah, exactly. Like, I understand that to some degree, especially when they're really little. But like, I'm, at some point, I was like, you got to let the kid bump his head right. a little bit. You know, it's, <laughs> real world, you're not going to be there every single where place that person goes. So, like, just right. make sure that, you know, you know, protect them. You don't have to put a football helmet on them or anything, but, you know, to let them bump into 
with something. It's right. okay. So there's definitely some consequences that happen as a result of helicopter parenting. Uh, we're going to go over some. Low self-esteem. Mm-hmm. So, I mean, why not? Everything is handled for them. So they don't really believe that they can do anything themselves. Sure. You know, like just never had the confidence built that I could do something. Um, anxiety. Mm. That's another one. So mental control is not developed. You know, self-regulation, their emotions, those kinds of things. Yeah. Just not developed because everything's handled for them. Um, they can feel entitled. Mm-hmm. You know, and so what happens is because they're the center of the universe, they're always being protected. They're always there's so much focus on them that they end up feeling entitled to things. Yeah. And another big one, uh, their coping skills. So, I mean, obviously, the anxiety is one thing and then being able to cope with things is just not developed. They don't know how to handle situations because everything's always handled for them. Right. So that's not um, if you are a helicopter parent, stop Mm -hmm. and realize that. So um, but we're going to go on to the next one. Lawnmower parents. Mm -hmm. So (laughs) this is funny, but basically they mow obstacles down. In front of their kids. Mm, okay. So that's the idea that if there's anything in front of their kids, they mow it down so that their kid doesn't have to experience it. Right. So in that sense, their their child doesn't f- need to face failure, adversity, struggles, whatever. Yeah. And I think, you know, with a lot of this, their intentions are good, mm-hmm. but just practically it's really bad. Right. Like the yeah. reality of it. Yeah. Is and that's what a lot of these things. Intentions yeah. are usually pretty good. But. Yeah. And most of the time, lawnmower parents. Um, will act the way they do because of their own issues in mm-hmm. their life, of course, mm-hmm. you know, sort of reflecting on that. Uh, they may have really struggled when they were young mm-hmm. and they don't want their child to struggle. So that's one scenario. Right. Um, another would be that they felt abandoned by their parents. Yeah. And so they don't want to do that to their child, mm-hmm. you know, cause they, maybe they felt abandoned when they really needed a parent sure. and their parent wasn't there. Right. Right. So that those kinds of things can scar a child into their adulthood. And so then they're doing things like that, like overcompensating, whatever yeah. the term you want to use for those kinds of things. Um, they're really, like I said, the, the, the intentions can be good. They're really wanting to help. But in fact, it actually ruins the child. Right. You know, they're just they're not going to know what to do or how to handle struggles in their life. And it's just it's not going to be good. Um, so some of the consequences of lawnmower parenting, very similar to the other. They're not going to know how to handle conflict. Mm-hmm. They simply haven't experienced it. So that muscle yeah. conflict resolution muscle just never developed. Right. They're going to blame other people. Which is that's that's a big one. Yeah. Uh, It couldn't have been their fault. Yeah. Nothing ever is. They don't have to take responsibility for any of their own issues. Mm -hmm. You know, someone else will handle it. Uh, Give up on things easily. So, you know, it's just too hard. So it's just better, easier not to do it. Mm -hmm. And then they'll call on others like their parents Mm -hmm. to help them. Mm. So why should I do it? Someone else will step in and handle it. Right. You know, and, and, and even that happens like in college or whatever. It's like, you know, instead of the child handling the problem by themselves, they'll call their parents and be like, hey, I need your help with this. Mm-hmm. You know, and it's one thing that I guess ask for help. That's not that big of a deal. But with certain things, you know, it should be able to solve it themselves. Right. You know, and, and that can I mean, I can think of so many things like even just like being able to pay for something. Mm hmm. Well, maybe you shouldn't get it, you know, <laughs> right, yeah. or maybe you shouldn't have it if, or you need to work towards it or, yeah. you know, whatever. I mean, if something's in excess or yeah, it's just, you know, it's so easy if you know that is there for you to fall back on, mm. you, you might not be motivated to do anything, right? you know? And so that's, that's a problem. Uh, stress and failure a really strong kryptonite to these people mm-hmm. um, who've been parented this way. They'll find often they'll find other ways of dealing with these kinds of problems. So especially mm-hmm. if they have anxieties and problems like that and stress, right. they, they are prone to addiction. So yeah. they're prone to solving it with medication. Yeah. And you know, that's just not a, the best way to handle it. Um, other terms for this lawnmower is bulldoze parenting. <laughs> same yeah. concept so, yeah snow plow parenting was for those also in the winter yeah for those in the winter in those northern states uh, <laughs> we don't want to leave them out <laughs> uh basically it's anything that can push 
obstacles out of the child's sure. way. Sure, yeah. It's going to do that. So that's uh, lawnmower parenting. Uh, the next one that's just horrible in my uh, opinion, uh, tiger parenting. So this hmm. became popular year, you know, years ago. It, it actually, in 2011, a woman named Amy, I want to say C-H-U-A Chow, maybe? C-H-U-A? C-H-U-A. C-H-U-A. Oh, um, C-H-U-A. She was the one who coined it in a, in a memoir that she wrote. It was kind of this Chinese-American concept um, known for being really strict and demanding. Mm. I think the term tiger mom yeah. is where you know it came from. Um, they sort of paralleled it with very strict households throughout parts of Asia. Mm. And really the focus was putting their children's academics or their career really before anything else. Right. The child's only option was to succeed right. or is to succeed. So, this might be very similar to like a stage mother mm-hmm. in Hollywood. Sure. You think about it like that, where, you know, the, the, the child is forced to act or perform, you know, singing, dancing, whatever. Mm-hmm. And the, the, the stage mom or the stage parent is really pushing and driving them. It's not something that they necessarily want to do or yeah. to that level. And so um, problems ensue. Some yeah. of the consequences, depression, sure, anxiety poor social skills. Mm -hmm. And here's an interesting one too. And for sure focus on the negative. Yeah. Um, Often it's like that. There's, I I mean, I've, I've heard a joke where, you know, the child comes home, says they got, you know, an A on their test or they scored a 99 and the parent focuses on, well, which question did you miss? Right. Yeah, (laughs) exactly. Yeah. You know, Um, you know, and here's the thing. Parents will think of success sometimes differently than the child. And in this situation with the tiger, the the child's opinion really doesn't matter. Right. Like they're not taking into consideration what the child wants to do. It's right. like your grades are important. Your academic is the most important thing. Mm-hmm. And w- you know how you're going to get to college and how you're going to get then what your career is. And it's just this driven, 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 driven thing. Mm-hmm. Um, it really makes the parent feel good. That's yeah. why it's being done uh, without real recognition of how the child might feel. Right. So it's just, you know, it's all for themselves. Yeah. And I, I mean, I, I could imagine the relationship of the parent child isn't very strong. Mm-hmm. Um, you know, as they get older, the child gets older and realizes, I think sometimes there might be an appreciation or respect in that sense, because they understood that like they wanted what was best what they yeah, thought was best for them for sure. But there's a lot of animosity and anger. And there is. I mean, I, I can speak and I won't mention any names, but I known people who have been in circumstances like that. A lot of friends from various cultures, including yeah. American cultures who have had parents that were similar to that. Maybe not the extreme, Very I would call them a tiger <laughs> per yeah. se, but, um, but yeah, I've seen that, that be the case or if that been, I've heard at least from them that their parents were like that or, you know, certain things. And it did cause some issues. I wouldn't say it was necessarily terrible, right. but it did cause them to kind of of anxiety and and um, like the perfectionism uh, as they got older, and they had to learn to forgive themselves for certain things, and th- that required a lot of like kind of growing independently and be like, look, you know, I don't have to be perfect all the time, right. and, and so I think that that's what the problem, and you know, like you said, it led more to depression and anxiety. Yeah. So and and then maybe they weren't you know expressing it at that time, but I think yeah, I, I can I can see that it's like there was almost this like underlying expectation where. I mean, because I can see it in my own childhood as well as, you know, the idea of passing it on to my kids where I am trying to be conscious of it. Um, but I know that there's just expectations because of who we are, or how we sure. operate or whatever. Mm-hmm. And sometimes we don't even say it. Right. But we put those kind of expectations on our children. And, and you say, want everybody to do that. And best. not even academic. I mean, that, the yeah, tiger exactly. thing was really academic and accomplishment, but right. it can be through sports. Yeah. You know, it could be through um, or through the arts, right? you know, whatever it is. It's like, oh, they have to be the best or they have to be. And yeah, I mean, that that can really be difficult for a child to handle that kind of pressure. Mm -hmm. You know, so as a parent, you got to be conscious of that and Mm -hmm. and aware of that. And, and, And I try to be I can't say that I'm, you know all the time but I I actually am conscious about that Mm -hmm. because I feel like for whatever reason some of my own stress and anxiety that I experienced in my early adulthood I don't know exactly where that came from but a lot of that was that perfectionist thing Mm -hmm. you know where because I 
I, you know, I don't know if it was actually just my parents that were saying, well, you have to get good grades. You have to do this. You have to get into a good college. You have to, do, but I always felt this internal pressure and in whether I did it to myself mm. or not, but it didn't bode well for my psychological impact. You know, I mean, it, or my, it, it, it drove me a little crazy, mm. you know, where I started having anxiety and started having stress that not until I've now gotten older where I've kind of be able to reflect back on that and go, that probably wasn't very healthy for me, mm-hmm. you know? Um, you know, 10 years of meditation and I finally have calm, <laughs> yeah. calmed down a yeah, little, there you, you go. know, <laughs> reduced my expectations of myself a little, <laughs> not sure. a lot, but yeah, yeah but at least, Hey, some um, pressure has been, but yeah, but making sure that I'm not passing that on to my kids. You right. Know? And, and I do worry about that is just, you know, Oh, you always have to be doing your best and you always yeah. have to be striving this and you always have to, be, you got to be careful. You do have to be careful. There's a fine just, line and, yeah. and, and encouraging is great, but you know, also like making them feel bad when they're not, it's right. not the best way to approach it. So totally. So that's the tiger, the tiger one. Um, and then the others, I, I have some honorable mentions. Okay. They, they didn't make the top three, Congrats. but they are on, honorable mentions. Yeah. Uh, the outsourcer. <laughs> so this is somebody who just gets other people to parent their kids. Mm -hmm. So whether it's caretakers, nannies, babysitters, whatever, they just, they're, they're, they're an outsourcer. They Mm -hmm. don't actually aren't involved. So that one's pretty bad. (laughs) Um, not to say that it's bad to have one of those things. It's just bad to leave all your parenting up to them. Yeah. On a side note, a friend of mine wrote a book and one of the characters was named the outsourcer. Oh, nice. (laughs) What was it about? It was, uh, the adventures of unemployed man. I'll give him a plug. Oh, and basically one of the villains, one of the villains was named the outsourcer because it was taking away jobs and giving them overseas. (laughs) (laughs) Oh, that's funny. It was pretty good. Yeah. Yeah. The outsourcer. I didn't mean to take it from him. Uh, No, no, he didn't have it. He had it years ago. Yeah. Yeah. Um, another one under parents mm. sounds like underpants, but <laughs> under parents, uh, these can also be called slackers or free range parents. Mm-hmm. Basically they're just too lazy to do it. Okay. Apathetic. Yeah. yeah whatever. Yeah. yeah. Uh, pa- uh, permissive parenting. Yeah. Um, another one, narcissistic parenting. Mm-hmm. This is just somebody feeding their own ego. They're driven by their own needs. They're not really concerned, which some of those other ones are like that. Yeah. Um, but just feeding their own ego. They really don't care what the child cares. Right, what right. They want. they want. They just care about how they look and how they yeah, how, yeah. how they are perceived. Right. Um, and then the last one, toxic parenting, which this one really, you know, I mean, it basically covers anything that's negative, but it really is about neglect, abuse, and that can be both physical or emotional. And this is just like the worst scenario. Sure. Um, I, I don't understand why somebody would have kids. I know. If they decided be to be way. toxic, yeah. you know, I mean, but they I, think I guess that's, that's part of it. Right they don't to do it, you know. They, yeah, they or just, they don't realize that they're toxic. Right. I mean, I guess that that and they were raised similarly, so they're yeah. like, "Well, this is how you parent." The cycle continues. Yep. So yeah, let's not do any of these. Um, <laughs> let's stay away from these. This was supposed to be, well, except for the last one, it was supposed to be a little lighthearted. Um, you know, hey, <laughs> let's so end on Debbie, a somber Debbie, sad note. Debbie Downer at the end. <laughs> um, but Alan, if people have any comments, questions, I'd love to hear other people's um, horrible parenting styles mm-hmm. that they've experienced or are aware of, what should they do? They should write us an email podcast at dudes, the dads.com Twitter at dudes, the dads, Facebook dudes, the dads com. And uh, please go to YouTube and look at the dad university stuff. There's a lot of great stuff up on there. Um, also, if, if you're listening to this, please go to the podcatchers that you listen to to and leave us five star reviews, go to Apple tunes, whatever they call it now. Apple, Apple <laughs> Apple Tunes, um, Stitcher, uh, you know, Google Play, all those places, and leave a review and uh, and five stars or a thumbs up or whatever you like about the show. Uh, it really helps perpetuate it. So, thank you. Awesome, Alan. As always, thank you. Thank you. And we will see you next week. See you next week. <laughs>